Welcome back my friends to your channel. Today we are going to talk about the DFS or distributed file system and we are going to uh, see its features and then we, are, we will uh, explain how to set up the DFS step by step on your uh, environment. Uh, please uh, don't forget to uh, like, share and subscribe. First we will start to talk about what is the use of uh, DFS and why uh, we need DFS. Uh, so uh, usually in uh, any local environment you make uh, folders in certain servers that will be shared among uh, several employees this share is a simple share environment that you create on certain server inside certain folder where you set permissions and the security and uh, uh, you give uh, uh, the sharing of the files uh, and the permission to read and write for each employee depending on uh, uh, his or her privileges. Now once uh, the sh this share is done, uh, the access to uh, this shared uh, folder will be uh, to uh, through the name of the server for example slash slash uh, server zero uh, one dot your domain uh, dot local slash the name of the shared folder and inside it you will have your own uh, privileges now the the problem here is what if your server went down for any reason for uh, let's say power off or uh, memory corruption or whatever uh, any uh, uh, reason that may happen to, to the server and went down uh, then uh, your access to those uh, shared folder will uh, be prevented here uh, the DFS uh, comes uh, along in order to allow you to uh, distribute your files among several servers, two or more servers, in a way that uh, all the data will be replicated momentarily and uh, in the same time you will give the, uh, uh, the name to access the, the server through a virtual uh, namespace as we will see and we will explain and then uh, the users will or the employees will access uh, will use this uh, space and they will access either on server one or on server two and uh, they will not uh, feel any uh, interruption or any uh, uh, kind of uh, downtime in case one of the servers went down for any uh, reason dfs consists of two main parts the dfs replication and dfs namespace uh, the replication part is the part that allows uh, your file to be uh, replicated from uh, one server to another and this includes the deletion part uh, if uh, someone deleted a file from certain location it will be deleted from uh, the other location as well uh, and the namespace is the virtual name that uh, you will use to uh, and give the employees to in order to access the files without uh, giving them uh, the direct name of uh, the server and in the same time uh, uh, they will uh, uh, be accessed in either one of the servers uh, so that in, uh, if any server went down they uh, will not get interrupted now i will start to uh, explain uh, how to configure uh, dfs step by step and through uh, this configuration you will get to understand uh, exactly what uh, dfs uh, is uh, all about you will start uh, by adding uh, the uh, role of uh, dfs from the roles uh, and features of uh, your server uh, and then you will uh, continue uh, till uh, the end uh, and uh, after that you will have the dfs management installed once uh, the installation is done you uh, will be able to open the DFS management and uh, from there you uh, will start to create your namespace and the replication. We'll start uh, initially by creating a namespace. We will uh, specify the server where we, uh, which will hold the virtual name of the namespace uh, which usually is the domain controller. The next step is uh, to uh, define or uh, specify the name of uh, this namespace. Uh, after that, we will uh, go and uh, edit the settings to uh, choose uh, the permissions for this uh, namespace. Uh, after we choose uh, our uh, custom permissions, or maybe we can go and keep the permissions as uh, they are. Uh, after we choose the permissions, the, 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 uh, the decided permissions, we will uh, go and uh, choose the name of the namespace, the type, sorry, of the namespace, which is usually a domain-based uh, namespace, not server-based. 
the domain based namespace will allow us to enter the namespace using uh, our uh, domain name which is for example uh, domain.local and while the uh, server based namespace will uh, make you go to uh, the specified server that you, uh, the, the domain controller name uh, that you use to uh, create the namespace. And the difference here is that uh, when you have uh, a, do a primary domain, additional domains, uh, if in case of one of the domains uh, get uh, down for any reason, uh, you, uh, you will still have access to your namespace. After that, uh, the, uh, it will give you a review for your uh, creation. And uh, finally, you will go and confirm the creation of the namespace now once the uh, virtual namespace that you created uh, is done you will have to go and specify targets uh, of this namespace the targets are the real physical locations that will be uh, inside your physical servers or maybe virtual machines that uh, will have the uh, shared folder themselves you may add as many targets as you want uh, to the namespace. The main important thing here is to remember that you will have to add uh, the targets in each uh, uh, physical or virtual server, which means for each real location, uh, in order to have the access to all the locations uh, in spite of uh, any uh, server went down. Once you add uh, the targets, uh, the, uh, all the targets that uh, needed, you will be able to access your uh, namespace as you may see in the uh, image. Now, once uh, this is done, you will go back to the DFS management. And this time we will not go to the namespace, we will go to a new replication group. You have to create a replication uh, for your uh, physical locations and, and uh, all the servers, the target servers that you created. Otherwise, uh, once you access uh, the, ser the, uh, the location through the namespace, you will not find all the data there. For example, let's say you put location server 1 and server 2 and you didn't make any replication. Uh, now, when, once you access the shared folder on server 1 and put data, if in case you disconnected from there and went uh, to uh, the namespace, send you to uh, the server 2 as, a, uh, this, as a, a target, you will, find, you will not find your uh, files that you placed in server 1. This is why you need uh, to uh, make uh, the replication configuration we will start by going and creating a new replication group we will give uh, the group uh, a name and we will specify the target folder that will be replicated uh, then after that we will uh, f uh, go and specify the servers where the physical location or the uh, target folder that we specified exists uh, and then we will go and choose which uh, which is the primary member a primary member is one of the uh, physical servers or the virtual servers where we have the uh, target folder. Then we will specify the topology. As you may see, we have a full mesh topology or no topology or a hub and uh, spoke uh, topology. Each one of uh, these topologies is uh, specified uh, with its uh, own features. Usually we uh, choose uh, to go with a full mesh in order to have our files replicated and deleted from all uh, the servers uh, at the same time. Uh, after we choose uh, our topology, then we will go and choose the uh, schedule and the bandwidth. We uh, may uh, choose to schedule certain, uh, to, to, uh, to make the copy at certain time, the replication, and we may specify certain bandwidth in case we have limited network connectivity. Then we will review our uh, configuration uh, and then confirm the uh, uh, our choices it will give us a message that the replication may take time depending on uh, the network and the active directory uh, service itself it usually takes uh, five to ten minutes to start the replication after the replication configuration is done we may go and choose to share and publish uh, the uh, replicated folder in our uh, namespace uh, then as well we can go to the replicated folder to its properties and then choose to filter uh, for example certain types that we don't want uh, to be replicated and we can uh, make any changes any necessary changes to the namespace and the, uh, the, uh, also the topology and the bandwidth and uh, the schedule. 
here we will uh, be finalizing uh, the DFS uh, step by step I hope it was clear enough for you my friends uh, please uh, don't forget to uh, like uh, share and subscribe for uh, more videos to come